Well, this is the first time Republicans have had the chance to elect the House Speaker in Maine in more than 30 years. Part of the spoils of victory after one of the most dramatic power flips in Augusta in state history. New City's Greg Lagerquist joins us live on the political edge with some of the architects of that sweeping Republican victory. Greg? Well, thanks very much, Jeff. You know, we've said it a couple of times over the past couple of weeks, but it does bear repeating. This is the first time Republicans have swept the state Senate, the state House, the governor's office in Maine in nearly 50 years, the clean sweep. I'm joined now by a couple of those key party leaders, Christy Lee McNally, the executive director of the Republican Party, Lance Dutson, the communications director. First of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Greg. Christy, let's start with you. I mean, again, this was, as we've said, this was this was dramatic news and a dramatic change in Augusta. What happened? In your own words, what do you think were some of the keys that allowed Republicans to go from 2008, where you had had clear majority, at least on the House side, a clear majority for Democrats, to a point today where you're like, hey, we've gone from the political wasteland to the promised land in one election cycle. Um, I, th I think it started off with Charlie Webster and I and a couple of other key leaders, Josh Tardy, Kevin Ray, we all sat down and said, what are the issues that are, going, that are affecting Mainers and uh, what are the issues that we can educate them and show them the difference between Republicans and Democrats? Every year we, se we send out the same palm cards. They look exactly like the Democrat, the Republican, promising the same exact things. This time around, we wanted to show them the difference between the two. When the legislature passed um, the tax on labor, mm -hmm. we decided that that was definitely an issue that affected Mainers and they were very upset about. We decided at that point to take a huge risk and start the repeal effort. At that point, we had a, an army of people who collected signatures. And once we were able to do that, then we had the repeal effort itself. So you thought you had a key issue there. I that was, was an absolute key issue. We had a referendum issue. issue. We yes. had Democrats thought they were doing some tax reform that might benefit the state, shifting from sales tax uh, from income taxes onto sales taxes. You felt though that they were off message on this, Lance. I know this is something you've talked about during this campaign too. Sure. I think um, you know. I think that after nearly four decades of of increased taxes and a, and a deteriorating business environment, Mainers finally understood this time around that. The, the tax shift that was planned by the Democrats wasn't an effort to reduce taxes, but an effort to expand the tax base. And I think, you know, it was, uh, it took a lot of hard work, but I think our, uh, our change in the way we address this and, and our, our mission to make sure that the voters of Maine understood what Democrats were doing, what their record was in Augusta, I think this year it was an easier sell because of the history that's led us to this point. Let's talk also about today. Big news today, obviously there was a caucus in the, in the House Republicans caucus, they selected Bob Nutting to be, of Oakland, to be the uh, nominee to be House Speaker. And again, for the first time in almost 40 years, there's going to be a Republican House Speaker. Already, though, we're hearing, hey, it was four different votes. It was close between Paul Davis and Bob Nutting. Eventually, Bob Nutting was selected. For those who say, gosh, maybe this shows the party is divided, at least in the House, how do you either one either one of you respond to those who might try and make that claim? Well, I think th the energy right now in the Republican Party is so high, and we've we have had uh, tremendous victory last week, and we feel really good about our opportunity to lead right now. And there is a lot of energy within the caucus of folks that want to jump in and roll their sleeves up and work very hard. And I think that's what you saw today, and the fact that there's we have great candidates for Speaker of the House, and I think it was uh, emblematic of the energy that's within the party right now. I'm trying to weave though. You've We've got some folks certainly who have been in the state house for maybe two, three, four terms, and a lot of freshman Republican lawmakers who are there. Any difficulty in trying to blend those two different groups to try and get stuff done? No, I think actually I, I we sat down and looked at the list last night of all the freshman legislators, and with all of the people who went for leadership, have actually already worked with all of those candidates. A lot of our they took them under their wing; they already have, know them. I think it's going to be a great year for uh, the Republicans with actually the leadership. Slate now is, is Representative Nutting, and mm -hmm. uh, Representative Phil Curtis is the majority leader, and then the assistant leader is Representative Andre Cushing. Mm -hmm. They are all great leaders. They have great personalities, and I think you're going to see a lot come out of that caucus this year. Well, let's talk about then that next. You have a majority. In fact, you have more than a majority. You have a majority in the House, the Senate, and you have the Blaine House. It appears to be an historic opportunity to get different legislation passed than perhaps we've seen over the last decade or two. And yet, I think if you ask Democrats, they thought they were in a great position in 2008. Look where they're at in 2010. How do you make sure that whatever you do over the next couple of years, you don't have a repeat and say, well, look where we were in 2010, but look where we are in 2012, losing the majorities again. Obviously, this has got to be a key concern. I, I think it's all about overreaching. I think what we need to do is pick three or four key issues that we need to change within the next two years. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. I think now the first... 
the primary thing is for jobs and the best thing to do is look at how we can bring businesses to Maine, how make make to make it much more business friendly and then everything else will follow suit. The taxes will follow suit, the jobs will follow suit. You've we've got to make Maine business friendly and then go from there. And Governor elect LePage feels like he's going to have a good working relationship with the Oh, I believe so. I, th I believe so. They have actually, I mean, they've already started the meetings in, and I think it's, it's going to be a, a good, good year, good two years. How about reaching out to Democrats? He said he would like to do that. Do you see that happening? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think the people of Maine have, have elected Republicans to take over their government, but they're, they, they're not interested in partisan bickering. They want us to lead, and, and that means working with both sides and making sure that the initiatives we put forward are something that everybody in Maine can agree on. Right, well, we've been talking to Christy Lee McNally, Lance Dutson, two leaders of the Maine Republican Party, about the new majority for Republicans. And again, it's going to be a very interesting two years. And a, obviously for the two of you and for the party leaders up there, a very important opportunity. We'll see what happens with it. Christy Lee, thank you for your time. Thank you. Lance, Great. thank Thanks you so much. Thank you. Jefferson.